everyone, this is Gali and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Dragons. Today we're going to do some corrections for our friend Atelier, who sent some of his drawings and he needs some help with designing his own dragon based on references. If you want me to help you with your drawings, I cannot do all of them, but I am willing to help you. You want to send your drawings to draconextermina at gmail.com, which is right here. And here, let's start with this video. So first we have the drawings he sent us, which is a, a dragon, then there's Drogon from Game of Thrones, a hawk, a roadrunner, and reference and his drawing based on the reference, which is really good. I'm going to make some corrections on one of the drawings he sent, based on reference of real life animals. And it's just corrections, but it's not to make it the way I want it to be. It's just to help people see how to make their own versions of dragons based on animals. So for that, we're going to start with the drawing he sent us, which is this one right here. here. Okay, so that's his drawing. So I can see there's a mixture of animals there. Maybe a horse, a snake, and some kind of tiger, probably. I grabbed some references of different animals and the hind legs of a canine to have more idea of what we're going to do. So for that, we can arrange our references based on the order we're going to use them, but for me, I'm just going to move to the side. Yeah. If you want to erase some parts of your reference, so you can see better. And at the bottom is where I'm going to draw my version. So, okay. so as we can see, right here, it's a good sketch of the start of an idea, but I think it's a mixture of maybe parts of animals but not a real understanding of the anatomy underneath. And that's why I always recommend going for things like this, where you can see the, the anatomy underneath. It might sound a bit complicated, but it doesn't have to be. So for example, you start with the basics, which is the head, right? and there's always a spine of your animal. And once you learn more about anatomy, it's easier to find these parts. And for example, the scapula. And you'll see that the other one is on the other side as well. Maybe rib cage. And then there's the coccyx or the hip. I'm not even like 100% accurate, you know, but you see that from this, the other part goes out. And you have more of an idea of the skeleton underneath your creature. It always helps to reference the bone structure of whatever it is you're doing. Just like here, for example. Doing it over photos is the best way, I think, because you already have the animal. It becomes way easier. Understand what's underneath. So yeah, you would do it with every one of the animals I have here, right? So after we have the basic idea of the skeleton, which is my recommendation to understand the pose, what our friend could do, for example, is see the differences of the anatomy of the different animals. Like for example, tigers, they have a uh, flatter nose, their eyes are on the front, and the difference from horses, for example. 
And if you wanted this this animal to have like a wide nostril, for example, like a horse, but maybe if it was, if it was a dragon, you might need a longer mouth. Maybe eyes that were a little bit higher. The ears are like the horses, but we can also add horns, for example. And ears, why not? We can make the neck a little bit longer. For example, the tiger has a very short neck. But in this case, with this creature, what I would do is I would probably just pull the face a little bit more. The neck longer. And reference on, on this kind of parts of the animals. They are, they're all made for different purposes. For example, one can run really fast, the other one is made for crouching and hunting. But their anatomy is not so different when we say it about the muscles or the bones. This is just a sketch of blending. You can see that maybe the hands are something complicated to do. So if you don't like them, you can search for different animals for that, like eagles or wolves. In this version, I made him bigger, so I'm gonna move lower. I'm gonna go for a little bit longer. Then having the rib cage. Maybe you want the other arm to come more here. So what I'm doing is just basing what my correction is with the other animals I grabbed as references. So you can see they all they all have like kind of the same pose, this guy and this guy, the tiger and wolf. But as you can see, this reptile, for example, the legs are completely different than what I'm doing here. So for this, you don't need all the details at first, you just need the basics. Once you understand the main parts of the anatomy is when you can well, do more things, more poses. You can even maybe stay longer, for example, thicker. You can probably even add wings. You can do so many things. We're going to go back to his drawing. So it's a bit very light color, so I don't want to see it very long in the computer. So the only changes would be understanding the placement of the bones and the muscles in the creature to have the, the correction for this part of the neck and this part of the shoulder. I'm not saying that it's easy to correct these things because you need observation and lots of practice and even people who already draw them very well 
they still need reference because it's always uh, good to know how things look to make them better or make them your own you can change many things if you know the anatomy you can make the legs shorter longer maybe add hoops maybe even add like spikes and all those fancy of stuff you can change the shape of the face and horns so many things you can do once you know basics so i do recommend tracing on top of pictures don't be afraid of the word tracing if it's made for learning there's nothing bad with it Because how else are you going to learn if you don't copy, if you don't observe? I've done this in my other videos where you can see that I do this on top of other animal pictures. And I'm not saying just like steal the post, I'm telling you to learn. Learn and understand the why behind the things you do. And then you can you can alter it. For example, the wolf in the picture doesn't have the leg up. But if you know the bones and the muscles and stuff, you know that if his other leg was like that, it would be here. Or if he moved this leg in the back, it would be here. So those kinds of things. You can alter things once you know the basics. So that would be all for now for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helps. And I repeat, if you want to send your drawings, you can send them to draconextermia at gmail.com and I will try my best to reply to any of you. Thank you for watching guys, that's all. Bye bye!